Transmission. See about that. So you may have heard naysayers say that StarCraft II Wings of Liberty is more like StarCraft 1.5, or that it's just a bit of a facelift on an old game, or that because there's only one campaign, it's only one third of a game. Well, don't listen to those people. StarCraft II is exactly what you would and should expect a strategy sequel to be. Sure, it updates the basic gameplay without changing the fundamentals but elements of originality are sprinkled all over, particularly in the campaign, which features wonderful amounts of variety and replay value. But maybe you aren't interested in the campaign, which is fine. In that case, you'll find a balanced and exciting online game that will immediately appeal to StarCraft veterans. But if you're a newcomer, don't worry. StarCraft II fills you in on the series' backstory incredibly well and features an exquisite learning curve across all modes. In other words, this strategy game has something for everybody. It's absolutely fun, absolutely fresh and should not be dismissed as being the same old thing. This is a superb game that updates a traditional formula in meaningful ways and you should play it. Adjutant, are my troops ready yet? Your forces are prepared and awaiting your orders, Commander. Adapter, sure. You'll find the most intriguing elements in the single player campaign. Of course, this is one area where you might feel a bit disappointed. After all, there is only one campaign which focuses on the Terran faction. So if you were hoping the campaign would prepare you to play online with the Protoss or Zerg races, well, you'll need to practice in other modes. But this is hardly an incomplete campaign. It's a fine length, maybe 15 or more hours, depending on a number of factors. It's also emotionally fulfilling, pulling you into the story of freedom fighter Jim Raynor. He struggles with a looming Zerg threat, his desire to reveal the hypocrisy of Emperor Arcturus Manx, and his own guilt over the fate over Sarah Kerrigan. You'll get drawn into the story for a number of reasons. There are a lot of high quality cutscenes that punctuate the most important developments. The voice acting is absolutely top notch. And in between missions, you can interact with various environmental elements on your ship, almost as if StarCraft II were a point and click adventure. That's funny, Convict. I don't recall giving you access to our database. The dialogue tends towards action movie silliness, but you'll get to know Jim and his supporting cast, and you'll grow to care. In fact, you may be inspired to play the campaign, or at least certain parts of it, more than once. Of course, this might be because it's simply that good. It provides a great amount of variety, always throwing a twist into the standard strategizing. I forgot how resourceful you were, Jim. Lava might occasionally flood into low altitude areas, or you might have to take down a series of trains while avoiding a roaming band of enemies. Each mission is different than the last, and all sorts of little touches make your tasks feel meaningful within the context of the story. But the campaign is also interesting and replayable for other reasons. You'll spend research points and currency on various enhancements and upgrades, and you'll earn units in a different order depending on which order you pursue the available missions. You'll even be faced with a few choices that decide how certain story elements play out, and in turn, determine what mission you'll play or what enemy units you might face. These are great touches and give you a good reason to return to the campaign once you've finished it. Another good reason to return might be to earn the achievements you missed the first time around. At the end of each mission, you earn achievements that reward you for accomplishing specific tasks. Some of these are pretty challenging, which might urge you to go back and work for the ones you missed. But the achievements are part of a larger metagame that's built into the Battle.net interface that houses StarCraft II. You earn achievements in every mode, and not only can you show them off in your profile, but your online friends will receive pop-up notifications when you earn one. Battle.net does have its drawbacks. If you aren't into this focus on social interaction, it might seem intrusive and there's no way to go invisible. And of course, while you can play the campaign offline as a guest, you need to be signed into your account to earn achievements. But overall, interacting with StarCraft II is slick and satisfying, and the way you earn rewards as you play is surprisingly compelling. For the most compelling play, you want to go online. If this sounds intimidating, don't worry. There are tons of experienced StarCraft II players competing already, but there's also an unranked practice league that will help you learn the ropes. And once you're ready to get serious, the game will place you in a league based on your performance in a short series of preliminary matches. And of course, you can practice versus the AI in skirmish mode, or learn the ropes with friends in cooperative and custom games. Or you can learn the ropes in the wonderful challenge mode, which really trains you on the nitty-gritty of StarCraft competition. 
and once you're ready to jump in with both feet, you're going to find a lot to love. There are dozens of maps to play on, and thanks to the included map editor, there are already all sorts of custom maps and entire new gameplay modes to check out. And if you're interested in rising up the ladders and showing off your strategic prowess, you'll be glad to know that StarCraft II is wonderfully balanced. All three races feel different, from the rush-focused Zerg to the scrappy Terrans, and there are some new units in place of old units and other important tweaks. So don't dismiss using this part of the game as the same old, same old. Most importantly, just like the rest of the game, online play is fun and exciting. Every unit has its uses, from the lowliest marines to the giant colossi, and each race offers great opportunities for fun micromanagement. It's fun to use the Phoenix to lift ground units into the air and render them helpless. It's a blast to rain down death using your cloaked banshees, or use a nidus worm to pump roaches into an enemy base. So yes, at its core, StarCraft II is a traditional real-time strategy game, that's great partially because the template it's based on is great. But layered on top of tradition is a tale told with wit and poignancy, a campaign with a lot of mission variety and replay value, an impressive suite of multiplayer options, a level editor that will give the game longevity, and more. Whew. Saul sells at 60 bucks, 10 more than you'd expect for a modern PC game, but you aren't likely to feel gypped. StarCraft II offers something for everyone. So if you have even the remotest interest in strategy games, you should close this window right now and go get it. Go on, what are you waiting for? Up next, Zerglings allergic to lemon juice, old wives tale, or new super weapon in the fight for humanity.